Hello, my name is Kevin Rundle, and I'm with Open Source Marketing Dojo, and today we're going to talk about Amazon's AWS LightSale service. Um, I believe if you are new to web hosting, especially in cloud hosting, because you're looking to have the very most dynamic, very most scalable, do it the first time and then just grow with the service, service this is the one you want, and I'm going to explain why. But first, I want to explain what is LightSail. Um, LightSail is a way to host websites and web applications. So web application is just a fancy way of saying a website that does something that's more like a program than just like co content and information. Um, it is a very powerful virtual private server system. And it's pro it is definitely the one that we consider the premier one as far as cloud computing goes. Um, it has about 75% of the market share. Now there are other simpler to use ones, DigitalOcean comes to mind, Linode comes to mind, and then there's other big boys, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Compute. Um, they're great services also, but Amazon is my girl of choice, and I'm going to talk a lot about LightSail. So basically, LightSail is EC2 in a very user friendly wrapper so that beginners can get started without too much overwhelm. You still need some technical acumen, but you are not at the same level as trying to get into EC2 and figure out what all these options are and make sure you do everything right enough that you can actually do what you're doing. Um, how does Amazon LightSail work? Well, it has like pre-bundled images of the most common things that people do install in AWS. Uh, over and over and over again. So if you're not doing a custom development, if you're installing a WordPress site or you're installing other software, these are the, the frequently asked softwares. Um, and then it has several operating system options so that you can build what you need at the time in a user-friendly way. Um, and so that's what it is and how it works. It's a place to store websites on the internet that gives you the most power possible. So let's... Uh, Let's pull it up. And I'm just going to change it so you can see my screen. Uh, and I'm going to pull up Amazon. And I'm just going to sign into the console. So I'm going to pause my screen so you don't see me signing in. But you'll figure it out when you get there. If you have not signed up, make sure you click the link to the video below. And I will have a video on how to sign up. And I'll walk you through actually signing up somewhere. So here I am in the management console. I'm going to click services. Right here is light sale. Um, I will often just open straight to this page. It will ask me to log in. I'll be done. Um, and so here we are. This is the wrapper for essentially an EC2 uh, installation, uh, like an EC2 instance. So that's Elastic uh, Computing Cloud is what EC2 stands for. It's the place you install servers on the regular AWS services typically this that's how I would do it because I just like the flexibility and I'm used to it now um, so you can create instances this is to create a, a server if I click create instance you'll see it gives you a, a location I'm going to change that when I do mine because I'm in Canada and that's where I want mine to sit um, and then it gives you a bunch of different apps so there's WordPress, WordPress multi-site there's just a Linux, Apache, my SQL PHP site with PHP 7. There's Node.js, Joomla, Magneto, Mean, Drupal, GitLab. Like These are actually super common. I presume Redmine is for Ruby. My guess would be that's for Ruby. I don't know. I don't program in Ruby, but you could if you wanted to. They've got an Engine X install, which um, which is just another web server instead of Apache. I'm going to be sticking to LAMP almost exclusively because that is my gig. Um, or you could choose the Microsoft selections. I'm not going to. I don't Microsoft well. I'm, a, I'm an Ubuntu flavor. I run Linux Mint myself. I'm all about the open source software. This is where we're going to live. And then you can again choose servers. When I come back to do this, I'm going to probably come back for Modic and do it 
directly to our own install. We're going to install the packages we need. We're going to make sure everything's locked down. We're going to check out the rest of it. But that's where we're at with this for now. So I'm going to go back out to home. We'll just keep going through what's here and then we'll create something. So you can create a static IP. Um, static IPs are free as long as they are attached to an instance. As soon as they're not attached to an instance, they have some ridiculously low cost, like a ninth of a cent an hour or whatever. Like It, it works out to be pennies on the month. Um, but do make sure you keep them attached. You're only allowed to have five IPs in LightSail. There's, uh, there's instance rules or resource rules. Um, and you can learn more about that here. And then you can create disks so you can share data between places or just store something new. And then snapshots are for taking a backup of a running instance or a shut the stopped instance even. Then you can use those to spool up bigger instances or smaller instances. Um, so that's kind of what you're looking at. So let's talk about what makes this good. One of the things that makes this really good is it's super affordable. Um, for let's go in so you can see for three dollars and fifty cents US a month you could get started um, and you get your first month for free which is pretty freaking awesome that is that is a good value for your money um, this is one of the reasons why I kind of first got into this and if you're new to to this whole thing it is it's a pretty big step so I'm going to just choose the WordPress one because that is uh, is easy peasy. And it gives us something that we can actually see once the instance is created. So here it comes. And they got a bunch of got a bunch of information here. I'm not too crazy about it. I'm going to leave it kind of where it is. And it's going to take a second, it's just pending. And of course, these always take longer when you're watching them, so waiting, waiting. There you go, it's running now. So let's go inside and see what you have inside. So you have an IP address, and we know our username is Bitnami. We could create extra storage if we wanted to. So if we wanted to attach an extra disk and, and mount it and see metrics. Um, this is going to be super important when you're trying to diagnose what the heck is going on if you end up with more traffic than you're expecting. Um, especially if you start doing custom development stuff. And then we've got the HTTPS and HTTP automatically set. And so if I went and checked out this, you'll see it is a WordPress install. Um, this is right out of the box. It's good to go um, without doing anything extra. And it is taking longer to shoot. Normally this is super, super punchy. I'm not sure why it's taking so long. Uh, it might have to do with just where it's at in its install cycle. Took long. Oh, there it goes. Uh, the system might have still been booting because I just loaded up and then I came roaring in. Um, if you want, you can create a static IP, and if you're running something that's going to be uh, production, I would definitely create a static IP. So static IPs, like I was saying earlier, they're, uh, they're free as long as they're attached. Static IP addresses are free only while they're attached to an instance. Um, you can manage five at no additional cost. So you can have up to five IPs, that's pretty freaking awesome. And we're going to use different VPSs for Modic and WordPress when we get rolling. Um, so I'm going to create this static IP just to show you that we can get one. There's our new static IP attached. Uh, what was this one? So you see it's different. Uh, I did not, so we're just going to click that. You see now it's saying just another WordPress blog, and we're we're static. That's that's pretty cool, I think. So that's that's another benefit to going this way as opposed to traditional hosting. You will never get that IP for that cheap with traditional hosting. Um, 
the speed of AWS is amazing. Now, obviously with this WordPress install, I don't know the username and password. I will have to log into the console to get it. And uh, I'm going to delete this, guys. So by the time this web, this goes up, A, this IP won't be mine anymore. And B, this won't be, be real. But if I just go in here, oh, look, I've got a nice SSH console in a web browser. That's something you don't always get, and it's amazing. And I can just cat out my, uh, my Bitnami credentials. Oh, there it is. There's my username and password. Again, you're going to watch me delete this before we're done, so you know this doesn't exist. This isn't mine. Um, and the next one I generate will be uh, done manually, and you'll never get my password out of it that way. So, so the ne nefarious son of a gun who's running off to log into this WordPress site to do something nefarious, don't. Um, and now, if I go here again, it should not load. Amazing, it's not loading. So, the third big draw for me to LightSail is I can move in to the, uh, the full-fledged account services. Uh, da, 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 da. So I can move to EC2. We're just going to go pop in here and take a look. I can move up to here with an uh, AMI from LightSail. So that exact install that I've created in LightSail can now migrate to someplace where I can have dynamic um, increases and decreases in the amount of resources I get. It's, uh, it's literally scalable to the amount of money you have. So as long as you can pay the bill, you can scale to every user on the planet, essentially. Like you're, you're just unlimited on your scalability, and that makes LightSail basically sit in the premium area. Now there's a bunch more you can learn about Amazon AWS. This is a massive tool. There's a reason why people who use it get paid a bunch of money because there is so much to know. So now there's some not so good stuff. Now let's just get out of the way. There are additional costs to things that you might want to do. If you wanted to add a load balancer you'll discover that there's an extra 15 or 18 dollars per month that you have to pay to have two servers that are are load balancing to the same uh, like or to, to load balance to two servers that are identical um, so you can create two instances so you could then just balance your traffic out. awesome but you have to have it set up, right? And so uh, now you've gone from five bucks a month, let's say, to ten bucks a month with a load balancer is twenty-eight bucks a month. Like it, these add, costs add up. If you store a whole bunch of uh, snapshots, you'll find that they can cost you. Uh, I don't know where it says it, but basically, you're charged at storage rates for S3, I believe. So. You can get additional costs by adding stuff on. And if you forget to remove stuff, those costs can kind of add up slowly. But I've literally had months where I'm like, oh, crap. And I spent $400 that I wasn't planning to spend because I was testing things. No, that probably won't happen to you. You're going to be a lot more aware of it. But it can add up really, really, really fast. If you forget to turn off a server or you forget to delete an instance overnight and you're using a big instance. Now, that isn't true in LightSail so much because the instances have fixed costs and everything has fixed costs pretty good. But I would definitely suggest going into your account, going into your billing, and setting up the warnings. And I'm going to make a video regarding that. LightSail also has the not so good feature that if you are terrified, if technology scares you, if working on your server causes you stress, you're going to want to hire somebody or you're going to want to probably go with a traditional host, at least at first, until you understand all the things that are internet-y. 
Um, it is not um, always for the faint of heart because you will be installing servers, you will be installing services on those servers, and you'll be setting up security things on those servers. It is on you, and though you can get support from Amazon by paying for it, if you get it wrong, you could be hacked, you could be, like, there's there's reasons that you find the cost of traditional hosting is higher, is because they're willing to handhold everybody, and they presume you're going to fail, so they, if they are going to charge you so little, they're going to put you on a shared host that's way too full, way too slow, not good. Um, and then the technical support is my last thought for what's not good about this. It's pretty expensive, um, but only if you're little. What I mean by that is, like, if you're starting out, the cost is about $29 US a month. And if you're doing production stuff, the cost is $100 a month. And when you're not making any money, $100 a month feels massive. If you are making money, it's not such a big deal. So just be aware that there is this underlying cost that you just need to know about. And so you got to think about that as you go. Um, beyond that, though, my final say is you could pick Linode, you could pick DigitalOcean, you could pick any of these. I mean, I love DigitalOcean, but it is not quite as powerful as AWS. And so my thought is, get into LightSail. It was designed to compete with them. And then when it's time to move up and you're ready to hire a technical guy to go into the rest of this, you're ready. When you're hiring that developer and he can set up everything and you can feel secure in what you're doing because somebody else has taken the reins, this can scale to infinity. And that makes Amazon AWS LightSail my choice for modic installations, WordPress installations, and absolutely anything else you want to do. Um, so those are my thoughts on this as a, as a platform. I think it's just amazing. Um, just going to flip through and make sure I didn't leave anything in. Now I'm going to close this. Um, there are a few choices that you could be disappointed with when it comes to light sale. You will have to learn some things, but I'm going to actually go through the process of installing a server, setting up all the services you need, locking them down as much as you need to right away, and, and making a modic installation run, making a WordPress installation run um, without using their default um, instance. Now, their default instance works pretty good, but there's a few things you're going to have to learn how to fix. And I might jump on and do the Bitnami one if somebody wants me to. But in my experience, I like to run an Ubuntu 18.04 server and then install my lab stack myself and whatever other services I want because it leaves me in a position that I know exactly what's going on on the server. I get that, that comfortable, like, I did it um, sensation out of it. And when I install software like Modic or install software like WordPress, I know exactly how it was installed. I know exactly what the settings are on the server. I know, like, whereas when I grab that Bitnami one, though it is a perfectly good installation, you don't know. This video helped you make a decision or you just liked it, please like it. If you want more videos, on this topic make sure you subscribe and if you never want me to make a video about Amazon again I'm gonna disappoint you but hit that thumbs down so I know this is not for you or for the rest of my audience you can also check me out at opensourcemarketingdojo.com um, and that's gonna be going through a whole bunch of changes now that I'm really back to making content and I can't wait to see you on the flip side take care